Okay, so this is key area two of unit three, so that's neurobiology and immunology. And this key area is looking at what's titled the cerebral cortex. So there are three videos on this area, starting with this video, which is about localization. So in terms of stuff that you learn at NAT5 about the brain, you learn obviously the brain processes the sensory information and various different structures of the body. We touched on that a little bit in the last video as well. And you learned the three main regions of the brain, which was the cerebrum, which job was to control personality and thought processing, uh, the cerebellum, which was mainly to do with muscle, uh, but balance and muscle coordination, and the medulla, which controls your breathing, your heart rate, and any of these unconscious things. Okay, so the brain is responsible for processing all information that's coming into your body and also um, signals that are moving out and basically movements that you're making, that sort of thing. Different areas of the brain have different functions. We know this because of people who survived brain injury, but also what we know is brain injury is really, really bad. It's, it's not a good plan at all uh, because the brain doesn't heal very well. And if you injure an area of your brain responsible for a function like breathing or uh, remembering, remembering your time tables, for example, you lose that function, one of which is far more important than the other. Although, math teacher, what would you say? Breathing or yeah, time tables? Both are quite important. Okay. Uh, so, start with the brain. Right, so, in terms of stuff you learned in that five, you learned that the little bit that looks almost like a bit of cauliflower at the bottom back of your head is the cerebellum. You learn about the bit, middle bit, basically the top of your spinal cord, basically your brainstem is your medulla, that's the really important bit. And then you learn about the top bit called, being called the cerebrum. Now, just to make it harder for you at higher, we're calling it something else, because why would we make your life easy? So instead of calling it the cerebrum, which you will never, ever call it again, um, sorry about that, it is now called the cerebral cortex. So it's not actually changed too much, but it's now the cerebral cortex, cerebellum and medulla. And actually, it's kind of easier now because you don't have cerebrum and cerebellum. So they are now slightly more different, which is a bit useful. Right, now the cerebral cortex is what we're going to focus on. It is the centre of conscious thought. So again, we knew that from National 5, we just got a new name on it. It can also recall memories and base decisions on these memories and experience. Something that I've been looking at recently is quite weird, uh, but the idea that your brain can learn stuff without you consciously thinking about it. And this is what happens in things like addiction. In addiction, you know a thing is bad for you, and yet you uh, want to do it. And the reason why you want to do it is your brain has learned when I do that thing, I get covered in drugs and it makes me feel nice. So this is where your brain can actually act as a sort of separate entity to your own consciousness, which I find fascinating. Anyway, not a lot is known about exactly how the area works, but researchers have worked out that each human brain shows similar or the same patterns of areas that do specific jobs. So we do all, when we look at human brains, have kind of areas in common. And that's what we're going to look at next. Okay, so... Looking at the idea of cerebral cortex localization, so basically the idea that certain regions of the brain have a similar job everywhere else, they're kind of localized to that job, if mm -hmm. that makes sense. Um, so the cerebral cortex, two of the things it contains is it contains both a sensory and a motor area, which you can see nicely in this diagram here, but they don't need to know what way around it is. They you don't, don't need, need to know, know it from a picture. No, so... But what you do need to know is that the sensory area, it receives and processes sensory information, which is not surprising. And the motor area is the one that generates movement impulses. If you think about it in a car, the motor is the thing that makes it move. So the motor area is the thing that makes you move. And it's like your motor neurons, they carry movement signals from the motor area of the brain. Now, the cortex also contains association areas that are responsible for language processing, personality, imagination and intelligence. You Again, you do not need to identify these from a picture, but you do need to know that its association areas have got these functions inside of it. OK, and what that means by association areas is when we look at CT scans and make people do particular jobs like process language, a certain area of their brain lights up. Uh, when we make them do stuff to, um, that uh, correlates with personality type responses is particular areas start lighting up. So these are areas that we associate in the brain with being linked to that function. Oh yeah, this is for me. Mm -hmm. uh, right, now this is extra, you don't need to know this, but this was basically worked out uh, through a combination of human experimentation, which is not a bad, don't do that, uh, but also from studying people who have survived brain injury. One of the most famous examples is Broca's area, which we will look at uh, when we look at split brain, and the idea that uh, this guy called Broca, he basically studied an injured patient's brain after they had died, and this patient couldn't talk after a stroke, and the idea is they looked and they saw a massively damaged area on the brain and went, oh, 
that must be the talkie zone. Okay, so we've done it by studying uh, brain injury, but this picture here, that's an image from an oldie times um, physiology manual, and that's talking about basically how to cure somebody from um, from having emotions, essentially. That is showing a lobotomy. So that spike essentially goes in right next to the eye, not through the eye, and essentially just mushes up that area of the brain that is there, um, and that should then cure that person of, well, they thought it was craziness, but actually it was just sort of having emotions and feelings and stuff. Uh, now, Phineas Gage is a fascinating example of this. Uh, his skull, he actually survived that injury. The photo there is him holding the railroad spike that went through his brain and the, in the skull direction that you can see there. Now, if you've got the sway, you can click on the link and you've got uh, Hank from Crash Course explaining how Phineas Gage managed to survive. Not, not how he's managed to survive that injury, because nobody knows, but basically what happened to him after he had that injury. Okay, so that's pretty much this first video, just as a quick summary of the important things that you need to know, because like we said, those last couple of bits are just extra. kind of extra yeah. nice information. It's quite gory, but cool. Mm. Um, so things you need to know is you need to know the cerebral cortex, which was previously the cerebrum. It is the centre of conscious thought, memory and decision making. OK, localization is the term for specific areas of the brain having specific roles. That comes up in exam questions occasionally. So make sure you know that term, localization. Yeah, you need to know that a localized area example is the motor area, which is uh, used for generating different movement signals. And I'll jump down to the sensory area that processes sensory information and it's a different localized area in the brain. And then you also need to know about the idea of association areas. So again, you don't need to be able to identify them on a on a, I was about to say map, picture. on a picture <laughs> of the brain. Um, but you do need to know that they control things like intelligence and language processing and personality and imagination. I suppose actually map of the brain isn't wrong either because it is. Yeah. It's a complicated area with specific zones. Anywho, uh, we hope you enjoyed our little <laughs> chat on localization. Uh, the next key area is, I've for completely forgotten it, so a surprise. There we go. The rest of this. The rest of this key area. <laughs> Let's find out.